Okay, welcome everyone to this talk about LibreOffice accessibility. My name is Michael Wekorn. I've been starting to look into accessibility in LibreOffice about two and a half years ago. And since July, I'm employed by TDF. So part of the TDF team as a full-time LibreOffice developer for accessibility. I'll be talking a bit about the technical backgrounds and some improvements in the past. But let's first start with what accessibility is. This is a definition from Wikipedia. I'll just read it out to you. Accessibility is the design of products, devices, services, vehicles, or environments so as to be usable by people with disabilities. The concept of accessible design and practice of accessible development ensures both direct access, that means unassisted, and indirect access, meaning compatibility with a person's assistive technology, for example, computer screen readers. This talk will mainly focus on um, accessibility using assistive technology like screen readers, but there are also other aspects to that. So um, one of the typical things is um, that the documents that LibreOffice writes or reads, they are accessible. So there are um, specifications on how to write specific um, information to these documents. Also um, documents <coughs> exported from LibreOffice like PDF documents that will be open in a completely different application. But this, as I mentioned, this will mostly be on the accessibility of the user interface, which is what I'm currently focusing on. Okay, let's start with a sample scenario of a screen reader. So screen reader is a tool for people that don't see what's on screen or don't see well what's on screen mainly. Um, a sample use case of how that works is, for example, we see here the um, page style dialog in Writer that has several UI controls. Um, what a user would do is to, for example, to move focus to the format list box we see here that shows A4, and then the application sends an event um, to the application layer, uh, to the accessibility layer on the on the system that is received by the screen reader, and then the screen reader retrieves more information from LibreOffice in order to announce the the element so that, that the user knows okay. Um, this is a list box, that's where my focus is, and I can change the value. It also says this is for the paper format, so the user actually knows what is this list box for. Um, for implementing accessibility, we have um, internal UNO interfaces that we need to uh, implement um, that provide the required information about the UI control. Uh, the basic one is X accessible. Um, you see the, basically the whole definition here. Um, so the only, or the declaration, um, the only method it has is called get accessible context and it ret and returns a different interface of type X accessible context. That's actually more useful to get the relevant information. Um, we see the method it has here. Um, so the first one is to get the um, amount of children, get accessible child count, and then you can receive, uh, retrieve the, the single children from that. So like uh, gener generic, the, the, the UI design is like there's a hierarchy of elements. So a dialogue has sub-elements and so on. So there's a clear hierarchy and that's represented on the accessibility layer as well. So you can get to the children from the parent and from the, um, from the children up to the parent again. So one, that's one of the essential things that this hierarchy is intact. If something doesn't work the way it's supposed to be, um, a broken accessibility hierarchy is often one of the reasons why that's the case. Um, then there are some um, important properties, like an accessible name. That's often what the screen reader announces. So if you put focus on a button that has OK on it, then usually the accessible name of that button is OK. And that's just what the screen reader says. So you know, OK, that's the OK button. If I press the space key, um, that's what it will do. So it will apply whatever is in the current dialog. Um, it has a description that can provide more information. For example, what exactly is this control meant to do? What happens if I interact with it? Um, there's an accessible role that's also very important, um, which describes what kind of user interface element is this. For example, a button, a list box, a paragraph, a document. So that's very helpful to know what it is actually about. And the screen readers also um, handle different kinds of user interfaces, uh, user controls um, differently. For example, if it's a paragraph, they might read out the current text. If it's a button, 
um, there are less, less options what to do with that kind of control. And there are states. Um, so an, an element can have different states. For example, it can be focused, it can be selected, it can be visible or invisible, things like that. Depending on what states this element has, it will also be treated differently. Um, there are relations. That's also an important thing that some of you might have run into already. Um, going back to the example we had before with the list box, the format list box here on the right hand side. So there's this list box and there is a label next to it, the format label. The label describes what this list box is actually for. So if the list box retrieves focus, then the screen reader will check is there a relation that says there is a label for this thing. So there's a labeled by relation and if there's a labeled by relation that shows points to that format label, it says, ah, oh, okay, that's related, so I will read out that as well. So it says format list box is what the screen reader says. If the relation is not there, it will just say list box, and the user might not know what is this actually for. There's also a tool that checks relations um, in the build process. It's called GLA11Y. So if your build fails after you change some UI file, it might be that that's because of that, um, for that reason. And that's actually why we have this, because it's necessary for the screen reader to provide the relevant information. Okay, then there are many more interfaces that can be implemented. So the accessible context is for basic information that basically applies for, for all kinds of controls. <coughs> then there are more specific ones um, for example, the accessible hyperlink interface, that's obviously for hy hyperlinks, so it provides methods to, to know um, what's the text that's being displayed, what's the target, so what happens if I click on that hyperlink, what website will it open or what will it do. Um, or ex accessible text can be used to retrieve the text, that's for example for a paragraph and writer, obviously, so you can get the text, but you can also get the selected text, um, can find out where's the cursor currently. You can even modify where the cursor is. You can, if you have the accessible editable text that's built on top, you can also edit the text, move the cursor, do things like that. Um, accessible values, for example, for, for spin boxes, you can see what's the current value of the page margin. Um, you can change that as well via that interface. So that's the, the internal UNO interfaces that we have, or some of them. Um, so the next step is we have this accessibility layer inside of LibreOffice now, but how do we get that to the screen reader? Because the screen reader doesn't talk our internal API, um, but there is a different platform API on every platform. So we support these. There used to be some Java access bridge in the past. I fortunately know pretty much nothing about it. I just heard it was terrible. Um, but we don't have that anymore, so we're supporting whatever the platform expects. Um, so on Linux, that's ATSpy or ATSpy2. We don't implement ATSpy natively in LibreOffice, but that's what we do via the, the toolkit. So for GTK, we're using the GTK mechanism, which is ATK for GTK3. For GTK4, there's a completely new API, um, so that will have to be redone. There's some initial implementation, I'll get back to that. Um, but from what I know, there's also pretty much still missing in GTK itself. So we still have to see how that develops there or contribute there in whatever way to, to make, make it work like it does for GTK3 right now. Um, for QT-based interfaces, which are used on KDE, for example, there's the Q-accessible interface and then Q-accessible text interface and so on. So these pretty much mirror what we have internally. They usually map very well. Um, then for the Gen or X11 VCL plugin, that doesn't have an accessibility bridge, but I think it's not really a problem because that's not something that's really meant to be used in production. It's more for by bisecting or testing things locally for developers. Um, for Windows, we support Microsoft Ac Active Accessibility or iAccessible 2 that's built on top of it. And we don't support UIA, uh, User Interface Automation, which is a newer standard. Um, I don't think it's a problem right now, at least as long as all of the screen readers still support iAccessible 2. We could implement support for it, but it would be, would be yeah, qu quite a lot of work probably. And it would also need adapting the screen readers because they have um, LibreOffice specific 
code in them that depends on the current accessible implementation, so that would have to be adapted as well. Um, from all of the things I've seen so far, none was um, actually specific to iAccessible, so it was something that can be fixed in iAccessible 2 just as well. So I currently don't see any urgent need to, to switch, but if it had to be done, it would be possible. The, the concept is fairly, fairly similar to what we're currently doing. And on Mac OS, it's NS accessibility. Um, I don't have too much experience with it, um, but it's, yeah, it's pretty similar in concept as well. It's slightly different, but, but fairly similar as well. Okay, this is a small example um, for, from the Qt accessibility bridge in LibreOffice. So this is uh, the method on Qt side is offset at point and it gets a point so that the idea is if you have your mouse pointer somewhere over a text field, you want to know which uh, character is under the, under the current position, for example. And then what we do is we get the X accessible context and we query that for the X accessible text interface, which is the one uh, on which we can then just call the corresponding UNO method. So see here it's uh, get index at point, uh, even similar to what the QT one is called offset at point. So usually there is a pretty much a one-to-one -one mapping between what the platform API has and what we have in LibreOffice. So sometimes you, as you can see here, um, there's also sometimes there's some kind of translation necessary. For example, we have different coordinate systems. One is the screen, one is screen coordinates, so global coordinates. Then there are coordinates relative to the window, to the top left of the window, uh, coordinates relative to the parent control. So sometimes you need to translate between these. So it's good to look into the documentation. What do we have and what do we need? And sometimes we need to adapt that accordingly. Okay, then I'll talk about some improvements, um, mostly focusing on the UI. There were others, um, for example, improvements to document accessibility, but I'll just um, point to the other talks that are still happening at the conference, so go to these if you want to get more details about that. Um, Balash will be talking about improvements in Calc and accessibility improvements in Writer, so you'll get more details there. Um, Michael Stahl will be talking about a better PDF UA exports, so how will these um, accessibility or accessible attributes be written to PDF. Um, Samuel Merbrod will be talking about the accessi accessibility sidebar, so there's a talk on that. Um, right after this talk, we'll hear more about a new accessibility testing framework by Colomborn. Um, so that's really a nice thing. I won't talk too much about it now because we'll hear more anyway, but it's great to prevent regressions, so things breaking that used to work and keep things stable. Um, Patrick Luby was working on several um, improvements on the macOS level for accessibility. Uh, there were several performance improvements and code cleanup um, by Noel, for example. I did some too. So that's getting better in my opinion less ugly to look at the code and work on it. And there was an initial GTK4 accessibility implementation by Keolan, as I mentioned. Um, it, so as I said, there's more to be done probably also on the GTK layer. So it's not just that we are missing things probably also down in the framework. But there needs to be some work. I worked a bit on the QT accessibility um, as well. It's, yeah, one thing you notice when, or I notice when working on accessibility issues, it's Sometimes you need to fix LibreOffice, sometimes you need to fix something else, so it can be in pretty much any layer. It can be in GTK, it can be in Qt, it can be even on lib80 spy or the Python bindings to that, or the screen reader, so um, started looking into all of these components at some point. Um, sometimes it's required to, to fix things elsewhere. But it's good that all of these are open source, so at least for the main things like NVDA on Windows, Orca on Linux, they are open source, you can actually look at why the, the screen reader is behaving the way it does and what would it need to, to actually work or maybe sometimes you actually need to fix the way it, it deals with things. Now, there were a lot of crashes as well related to accessibility that got fixed. Um, then there was a fix from, or an improvement from Patrick Luby as well. Um, when you copy cells in Calc, you have this border around the current selection which is animated, which is not great for people that have problems with that and get migraines. 
So he implemented that if you have, so these platforms, they have a way to say you don't want animations. Um, you can configure them in the Windows settings or macOS settings. And now if you set that on the system level, LibreOffice respects that and won't animate that border around the selection as well. So Patrick Luby did that for macOS. I did the Linux and Windows parts. Um, then Heiko improved the contrast in Calc. If you have the automatic font color, then it switches depending on the cell background. Um, that wasn't ideal for some cases. Like it's black when the background is white, it's white when the background is black, but the, what happened in between wasn't ideal, so I could improve that a bit. Um, in the find and replace dialog, um, there is a label when you do a search and there is no result. Or also when you reach the end of the document, there's a, a label that just says no, no result or something like this. That wasn't announced by screen readers earlier. It is now due to work by Jim Rykowski and myself. Um, what I was working on is also selection in Calc that wasn't announced by NVDA earlier. I was lacking some interfaces that I implemented and some more bug fixes. Uh, many thanks to Leonard de Reuter, who was implementing the NVDA side and found a lot of other issues that he reported, <laughs> but it's working now. And also there was an issue with the um, call Jumbo Sheets, so since I think 7.4 or something like that, we support um, spreadsheets with more than 16,000 columns. Um, that broke the screen reader in a way because now we have more, than, more cells than we can handle with 32-bit um, indices. So these had to be switched to 64-bit. Um, still the platform layer uses 32-bit integers but we can work around that by not using the indices, but using the table cell interface. If a table cell gets focused, we're not, no longer work, um, operating with the index of the child, but we are working directly with the table cell interface. So the screen readers use that. Orca had to be adapted to use that. And uh, yeah, we had to implement that um, interface on LibreOffice level. We don't have a, a UNO interface for that, but in our implementation, a cell is always the child of a table, so we can just um, provide that in the platform bridges. Like we operate on the table ourselves, we use the 64-bit indices to get all the information and just provide it for the cell object, so that works fairly well. Um, another thing was the uh, GNOME magnifier, which is like a tool you can zoom in to the UI. Um, um, had to be at, oh, it, broke when they switched it to use window relative coordinates because Wayland doesn't support screen coordinates. Um, so it was adapted to use window relative coordinates instead, but LibreOffice didn't support that. So just implementing the mapping between the different coordinate systems made that work as well. So now it's uh, tracking the cursor as well. So if you just see a part of the interface and you type something, it might happen that it moves out of, the, out of what you can see, but no magnifier now properly adjusts the view again, so you can actually see what you're typing or where the cursor is. And there were some improvements to the special characters dialog to be able to navigate that with the keyboard and also for things to be read out by screen readers and also the special characters toolbar item, which is kind of similar. Um, I did some improvements to the font work dialog. It didn't have accessible names for the items, so the screen readers just didn't read anything. That works as well now, so if you navigate through these, you know what you're actually selecting at the moment. Um, what I was working on fairly recently were several pop-up menus, for example, in the, in the toolbars uh, to select the font color or the background color in Calc. Uh, these just weren't read out by NVDA, and that works now. And also, you know, grid control exists. As, so it's a table like, it's a table, you know, control basically. Uh, it wasn't announced by NVDA earlier or even crashed LibreOffice. That, that works now. Um, there were some, did some fixes to detect the object under the mouse pointer, which is a feature that NVDA uses if the corresponding option is set, which is the default. So if you hover over some element, it's being read out but it wasn't always the, uh, the, the proper element that was being read out. So that works now is also pretty useful for my own debugging analysis. If you can just see, okay, 
you just move over that element, does that work as expected? You don't always have to find it somewhere else. You can just move the mouse over this. So it's pretty helpful for analysis as well. Um, there's a multi-line edit control that's used, for example, in the, in the update check dialog that wasn't announced earlier that, that had to, uh, the text interface had to be implemented for that, um, which I did. So now you can also have that read out by the screen reader. There are more improvements you can make to the update check dialog, but it, at least there's one way to, to have it read out by now. Um, there are info dialogues or warning dialogues. For example, if you type something in the document and then you close the application, there's a dialog saying uh, there are unsafe changes. You want to save them before you quit. Uh, that just wasn't read out by NVDA. So it was a little useless to have a just no. Okay, I can say yes, no in that dialog, but I have no idea what this dialog is actually about. So now that works too. Um, the writer tables weren't read out by NVDA. That works now. There's still an issue with Orca uh, that sounds kind of similar, but has a different root cause. We'll need more work. Um, NVDA also has a feature to, to query the current position of the cursor, and it says three centimeters from the left, 10 centimeters from the top of the page, or something like this. Um, that needed some additional attributes or some additional information, which is implemented. Uh, in writer now, so that works as well. Okay, so far for the some improvements. These are some ways to get more information or to contribute or to engage. So we have an accessibility mailing list. Um, the link is here on the slides. Uh, we have to find the tickets related to accessibility. There is a keyword. Um, an accessibility keyword, actually just accessibility. So here's a query, you can find all these tickets. There's also a meta bug, um, a general one, and then underneath there's one for Windows, one for Linux, one for Mac OS. So you can look at that and add tickets that are related. Um, there are about 200, 250 bugs related to accessibility in Bugzilla right now. So that's the way to, to add more or to get a, a rough overview of what is already reported. In, in Baxilla. Yeah, that's it so far. If any questions are there or any comments, I'm happy to hear about these. Uh, yes, we have uh, last year uh, discussions on the German uh, mailing mm -hmm. list, and uh, it seems that there are some users who are interested in, in helping to uh, getting LibreOffice be uh, better. Um, how, uh, what should we tell them what they can do? Um, if they speak English, the best way would probably be to write directly, uh, to write bug reports if they have specific issues, or to write to the mailing list. If they don't speak English, they can also write, or they, they can also write me directly if they want to. So they can also write me in German, um, or you can guide them in how to report bugs. It depends. Like, but yeah, yeah. I'm also fine to just get input in any way they want to. So write me an email. Yes, that's... Mm -hmm. Just one question is what will I, if I talk about now because that's a whole lot of other things. Oh. <laughs> I hope I didn't say too much of what you were doing or what you wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah. <laughs> I found a lot of things to talk about. But <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can make a quiz out of it <laughs> and see who was paying attention. <laughs> okay. Okay.